Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Elemental thrust for uh, linear twist and ideal twist. Today, what we will do is we will look at these two expressions that is the torque coefficient and the power related to the rotor. Now, we have made all the approximations, small angle assumption and the elemental torque is number of blades L into phi, phi you know is the induced angle and then D is the profile drag coefficient. Okay. So, this has two components, one comes due to lift, another one due to the profile drag of the airfoil. That is why this particular term later we will say this is actually induced drag and this is the profile drag. When you look at the power expression, it is exactly same only thing is that is the omega because power is torque into omega. And Again, this has the same component. So, the power required now has two components. One is due to the induced power, another one is the profile power or profile drag power. Now, there are two components to the power part. Okay, now, let us write the expressions. After that, we will we as usual we non dimensionalize the whole expression, which is because we take dq is n, you are substituting for the lift and the drag. Lift is we wrote it half rho u t square card and then lift curve slope into theta minus phi, phi was written as u p over u t into there is a another factor phi which is again u p over u t plus the drag term which is essentially half rho u t square c c d okay, into R D R. So, this is my torque, elemental torque due to all the blades in hover. Now, if I want the total torque, I have to go integrate over the length of the blade. So, I will put 0 to capital R, this is and power is exactly just because this is the same expression there is a omega and omega is a constant. Okay. So, power is q into omega that is all. Okay. Now, what we do is we write the expressions in non dimensional form. So, non dimensional c q which is the torque coefficient. This is nothing but q over rho pi r square omega r whole square into r. This is the torque coefficient and you look at power coefficient C p is power divided by 
rho phi r square omega r whole square into omega r okay all right but you know that power is q omega therefore omega omega will cancel out leaving behind you will simply say cp is equal to cq so power coefficient the coefficient not the power is same as torque okay power coefficient is same value as torque coefficient that is why when we evaluate we never use cq we directly go for power coefficient okay because cp equal cq so straight away write all the power expressions okay now let us non dimensionalize this is it clear okay because power coefficient torque coefficient both are same for rotor under constant rpm please understand because omega is constant otherwise you will get a instantaneous thing now let us write the cq you have to divide by rho pi r square omega r whole square into r so non dimensionalize this and you know that ut is omega smaller and u perpendicular if there is a climb we used it as vc plus nu right so non dimensionalized with respect to capital omega r so this will become just r bar r over r this we call it as lambda okay so we will call if you take this rho will cancel out then of course you will get nc over pi r that will be sigma solidity ratio okay you will get in non dimensional form and uh, i am going to write that in non dimensional form so i write cq directly okay since you know cq is cp so this is in non dimensional form the value becomes sigma a over 2 lambda theta r bar square lambda r bar okay plus sigma cd over 2 r bar cube d r this is the expression okay now if you split this term into two parts we can write it in this is one term this is another term if i write this it will be 0 to 1 sigma a over 2 lambda theta bar okay we had one uh, what is that we have to take an r square r bar square minus lambda r bar into d plus 0 to 1 sigma cd over 2 r bar cube d r bar okay oh sorry sorry sorry, sorry. sorry. now if you look at this particular expression leave out the lambda this is nothing but differential of thrust coefficient because if you look at that earlier last class i derived sigma a over 2 theta r bar square minus lambda r bar d r bar i wrote it for integral that is ct okay is it clear so this term 
you can write it as simply lambda d c t because differential of thrust coefficient because lambda is this if you look at this term last class we got that is the d c t and this is of course sigma c d over 2 d r bar ok. Now, this is C p. We have split the power expression as we did the component due to thrust, the component due to profile drag ok and even this term can be further divided into two parts because that is I go back here okay. you can write this as because lambda v z v plus sorry v c nu over omega r this particular term is lambda c this term is lambda i one is the climb another one is the induced ok. So, I can again put it as lambda c d c t plus integral lambda i d c t plus of course, the profile drag. Alright, is it clear? Now, you see how we are really splitting the power required for the rotor into several components only for hover and vertical flight there is no horizontal flight because that will come later ok. Now, I am going to write everything in a symbolic form very simple. So, here is this C p is C p climb power due to climb and then power for induced C p i and then C profile drag C p d ok. Now, the slowly we start the little complications suppose first we simplify then complicate if lambda c that means climb is 0 because climb velocity is constant if you take it out that is nothing but lambda c c t that is all whatever is the thrust if you want to lift the weight of the helicopter in non dimensional form just velocity into the weight in non dimensional that is your climb power then induced you have to get the induced velocity corresponding to the climb velocity please understand it is not the induced velocity is same as hover induced velocity that means, we have to learn how to get the induced velocity in climb ok that we will do later and then this is the profile drag. So, we will write the whole expression now for hover it becomes see this integral is what sigma c d over 8 that is all is it, is it clear. So, I will write the whole thing as C p i for hover if I take hover case power becomes C p i plus C p profile drag and C p i is nothing but what if it is a uniform inflow then this is lambda c t. So, we can write it as lambda c t for uniform inflow lambda means sorry lambda i I will put it that uniform inflow and this term is 
So, you will have sigma C d over 8 and I am assuming that C d that is the profile drag coefficient of the blade every section is constant because otherwise that also can vary please understand because if you have different aerofoils if you have different camber then the C d also can be a function of uh, span, but for ease of calculation and C d can be function of Mach number please understand because it is not a constant. Now, in actual calculation actual means in the industry you do not use this expression you calculate you get this drag coefficient of the airfoil for various speeds various angle of attack and then have a table ok it is like a data table that is through internal test and then whatever is the local angle of attack what is the local velocity take that value go pick up that C d and put it there that is how they evaluate because if you want to be more precise in your estimation of the power you have to take the correct characteristic whereas for the course because it is easy otherwise it is very difficult. So, we say everything is constant and we easily integrate from 0 to 1 and your C p i this is what you are getting lambda i C t plus sigma C d I will put it as C d naught or C d it does not matter if you want to put a subscript 0 you can put it because drag coefficient normally C d equals C d naught plus some etcetera. So, we will take it as C d naught which is a constant value. So, for this course we will use constant, but here in writing this expression we assume that lambda i that is the induced velocity in hover is a constant over the full disk. Okay. Then momentum theory has given me lambda i is C d over 2 momentum theory in hover ok, hover case lambda i is this that means I can directly put. Now, you see this is the expression which we got earlier in the momentum theory power when we wrote power coefficient it is basically C t power 3 by 2 under root 2 that is the ideal power which you can never get. In the real case because you cannot say my inflow is uniform all right and you will have a non uniform inflow and then there are some other swirl velocity is there swirl factor we have neglected it swirl in the sense that is actually you are rotating something. So, the flow also will go parallel to the rotor disc, but that effect is small, but still it is there in propeller it is they take it swirl even here you can do, but then how do you get the swirl again through simple momentum theory. Okay, I will not go into that, but if you want to know I have it we have done some calculations for propeller blade for NAL. So, that is there that report we correlated with some experiment which was very good ok, but in the helicopter blade usually the swirl takes very less. So, you neglect that it's a less power, but then non uniform inflow all those things are there that you cannot totally neglect it. So, empirically what is done is they say let us add a factor there is an empirical factor they add in writing this power expression because of various other reasons non uniform inflow etcetera. So, you say this is written as some factor k this is the factor which additional losses 
okay. because slowly you will realize the losses can be due to several reasons because this k is an empirical factor, but you are adding 15 percent extra. Okay. What are all the various reasons you can say? That part we will, I will just briefly introduce later. Then this is sigma C d naught over 8. So, now you see C p in hover is this expression. non uniform inflow effect then there is a tip okay the tip is you are integrating 0 to 1 straight away you are taking 0 to 1 in the sense along the full pan of the blade but near the tip it will not be like this. the real rotors there will be a drop in the lift at the tip whereas, the our theory what does it say because lift is some sigma a over 2 theta r bar square minus lambda r bar that is per section. Now, if we plot that expression I am just uh, going here because we took that what lift non dimensional lift okay, lift per unit span. Okay, non-dimensional. If you have that is sigma a over 2 okay. this is what we had that means, how this lift is varying? It varies as, so if I plot this unit span versus r bar it will go like this, this is 1. Okay. Now, you by looking at the diagram you immediately see that my lift is going up near the root lift is 0 very close because the dynamic pressure is small. So, this is there actually the lift become maybe beyond 0.5 you start having a large value. Okay. But in actual rotor this will go and then it will drop this is the this is theoretical this is actual because lift at the tip because there is no card at the end, it is 0. So, it has to go and then come down to 0. Okay. Now, this particular region loss you have a lift is loss, but drag will always be there okay. and then your inflow can be non uniform. So, all these effects this particular thing I think I gave somebody tip plus someone is supposed to do it is represented by a loss factor because if you want to get real load you cannot do by momentum theory please understand you have to use a more sophisticated analysis if you want to analyze near the tip it is very complicated motion because the motion is three dimensional flow will come vortex will go up etcetera that is why analysis of tip is very very complicated as we go along we will see later. Okay. Now, you have a expression for power this is from blade element theory, but you need momentum theory always to get lambda i and this is a uniform inflow. So, now you have this expression let us go and write the figure of merit okay because you now got the power figure of merit what was that ideal power divided by actual power okay okay i'll 
flip this. So, non uniform inflow account for losses. Okay. That means, when I say non uniform inflow, you must have a procedure to calculate the non uniform inflow, because simple this momentum theory does not give you that. Okay. So, we will learn about that particular <laughs> procedure next, but before we go let us look at the figure of merit expression. Figure of merit is actual power over sorry this is the ideal power over actual power. Now, you see for the same trust coefficient if sigma increases then what happens denominator is increasing. So, figure of merit will drop on the other hand if sigma is small okay, then figure of merit will go up, but last class I mentioned something that is you saw theta which angle if you look at that previous uh, theta 0.75 right. last class I wrote here figure of merit C t power 3 by 2 over root 2 plus sigma C d naught over 8. Right. Now, let us look at the kind of uh, paradox or contradiction which you get. If I want a uh, high figure of merit same C t it is fixed that means, sigma must be small solidity ratio that means, n c o uh, blade area over disc area, but when I go here if sigma is small then what will happen I need a higher pitch angle but higher pitch angle if I keep on going then I may land up in stall. So, now it is a compromise you have to decide what sigma I should use. Okay. If you look at most of the rotor blades okay, you can calculate because if I will give you sigma value I think I have some for the ALH blade I okay. will just show you that uh, this is what the curve for I have essentially plotted this figure of merit curve for some values. Now, you can see figure of merit increases with C t as you increase initially it rises very fast and then it slowly tapers asymptotically it reaches 1. Now, you it also tells me hey if I have a high C t that means, my thrust coefficient is high I will have a good figure of merit because the denominator if I keep on increasing the C t okay, uh, this becomes very small that means, I must have a rotor with a high C t you know earlier it requires high power because high C t means I need to have a lot of power because you know that lambda <laughs> it takes. So, this is uh, the figure of merit curve alone if you look at it, it will give you a set of result which you say ah, I should choose like this, but then actually you will find that whatever you decide based on figure of merit alone will become detrimental your to your rotor because in your operation because one is if I keep on increasing if I decrease sigma I know that my pitch angle is going up, but if my pitch angle goes up that means my blade may stall. Okay. So, I cannot make my sigma very small also just because I want to have a higher m. Okay. So, this is the that is why that figure of merit is used only as comparison of two rotors having same C t it is like same 
disk loading you try to have and then see which one is a better in terms of the efficiency of power required. So, it is not that I keep increasing my CT means then you will go most of the helicopters you know that CT is in this range, it does not go to 008, 008 is very high CT, 01 is too high. Okay. So, it is always in the range of not 5. Please understand when you look at all these numbers and C D naught profile drag of the blade, you may take it as approximately 008 or 6 or sometimes if you want to have a slightly higher value, maybe 0 0.01. So, please understand most of the numbers which we are dealing with here are small numbers okay, in the non-dimensional form, but this is to give you an idea how you can estimate the power in a very quick calculation over power, because you know that initially I showed as you increase the forward speed the induced power is decreasing. So, automatically you say okay, let me take the hover condition for my power estimate of course, high speed it may again come to the same value. So, these things give you a quick estimate, but please understand these are all very good in the sense even in the industrial calculation that is where the designers, the good designer who knows the basics strong, he will not do very detailed the calculation with the computer program, yes you do it that is for actual estimation, but he will know by simple calculate calculations, okay. your results will should make sense, if they do not make sense that means there is something wrong in your actual calculation in the very detailed thing. So, that is why it is very important to understand the various expressions thrust, inflow, figure of merit, theta, C p etcetera all these terms. Okay. Till now we have learnt about the power and thrust for a rotor in hover and using uniform inflow, but now we will learn about how to get non uniform inflow. Okay. And here just for uh, a reference I took the a realistic rotor sigma you see n number of blades 4. 0.5 is the card, okay. radius is 6.6, .6. so pi r, n c over pi r constant. Okay. Now, this value is about 0 0.096, only one particular rotor has a value which is about sigma 0.13, which is a high sigma, okay. not tall, most of them will be around. And I use the value lift curve slope as 2 pi okay. and I am using this expression to give you a hey, if I vary my C t how my pitch angle of operation changes if it is not not 4 it is about 6 degrees, but please note all these are in uh, radian then you have to convert it to degree. Okay. This is just a simple calculation which I did because you when I give you a homework you have to do that and not not by about 7 degrees go 10 degrees. Now, you see when you are preliminary design when you are making you do not go and then make a high operational angle, because if you do it actually when you build it may be still more and you start having blade stall, more drag, more power. So, you try to operate always around 5, 6 degrees, okay. 5, 6 degrees operation, but actual calculation you will say will go about 8, 9 degrees in the hover case that is a detailed calculation I have when you make in hover pilot gives a pitch angle of about 8 to 9 degrees to the blade. You do not go and give 20 degrees or 
something like that okay because in forward flight then you have to consider certain time varying angle and then you may have stall so all these factors come into picture so we have learned just now very simple hover now another important thing which i before i go further i wanted to tell you is we use the word okay uniform inflow first is how do i get another i said non uniform inflow then you will say how do i calculate because uniform inflow you simply assumed lambda i is root of ct by 2 okay how will i achieve that is the first question second question is you say there is no uniform inflow you will have only non uniform inflow that means how will i calculate the non uniform inflow so now we learn about how to calculate the uh, non uniform inflow okay i think i have some uh, numbers here which are some kind of uh, comparison before i go just for comparison okay before we go to the non uniform inflow one is a alh which is about 4000 kg this is me 26 which is about you see take off weight number of blades 8 main rotor diameter 32 meters please understand it's about 100 feet okay from here to there main rotor diameter maybe more than that i don't know all right because i don't know this will be what 50 feet one card one blade and then rotor rpm 132 okay now you see the tip speed of both these helicopters the weight class is totally different okay why i want to introduce here is so that you have a appreciation of the numbers in non dimensional form but industry for comparison yes but then when you actually design you can't tell your manufacturer okay i want a non dimensional thing of this no you have to give actual dimension so you need to know that number also tip speed is 217 meter per second 221 solidity see this is 096.12 thrust coefficient is a high and then lambda inflow lambda is, is a hover inflow and then the figure of merit fairly close even though the rotors are of different class different weight everything but when you look at the non dimensional numbers they come reasonably they fall in one area okay in the non dimensional level this is just for information only because you can collect the information from any two helicopters and then start comparing them okay so if you collect several helicopters then you will be able to have an idea of how these numbers will okay now we will go to the non uniform inflow calculation i'll just i have written final expression here but we will describe it very uh, systematically i will go through the derivation here because that is important see what we have is this is called differential momentum theory you may ask whether it is valid that's a different question you take the rotor disc now take a annular area annular area at a distance lower case r and with a thickness dr okay delta r this is my annular disc what i will do now is i will start comparing the thrust generated by this annular area using momentum theory and using blade element theory please understand you may ask uh, what is this momentum theory you said it is for the entire disc we used a slip stream and then we assume that some uniform inflow everywhere we calculated we got the expression now i am saying as though the slip stream consists of several concentric cylinders with the different radius okay and i take a small elemental area of the rotor disc 
I neglect everything else. I assume this particular annular area is not affected by either the flow inside or outside that. This is an assumption. Please understand, this is an assumption I make and I simply blindly, please understand, I blindly use momentum theory. There is no logic in this. The logic is finally it matches very good with real life situation, that is all. If you want to do very detailed, so that is why there are several people come up with ideas, okay, it is like this. Momentum theory is based on energy. You simply apply instead of over the whole disk, I take a small region, I apply over only that region, okay. That means what that region you have isolated from the rest of the things and you assume that nothing is, that is not affected by anything outside. This is an assumption you make and then you simply start using it. Now the proof, what you are doing is all not correct, comes if you get the result, if it does not match with the experiment too far away, then you say okay this assumption is not good. But if you find this is much closer, it is reasonably good, then you say oh maybe this assumption is fairly good, okay. And that is how, non otherwise you have to do, I told you, vortex theory, prescribed wake, free wake, vortex theory you do, even there are approximation in that theory, but that is a little bit more physics based, I would say, because you say, I say there is a vortex strength and then try to calculate the strength, whereas here you simply apply what you did for a whole disk to a small area, okay. That is the first assumption you are making. Then you will get from here, see now we will go step by step. If I take the blade element, blade element we know that lift per unit span, okay. This is due to all the blades you have to take, okay. That is N. essentially half rho omega r because this is what dynamic pressure card lift curve slope into theta minus u p over u t into the uh, sorry per unit span okay I'll, i can eliminate this okay per unit span this is the lift which we derived earlier. I can non dimensionalize this. If I non dimensionalize, I am going to get that expression which is written there on the other side of the board, okay. So, I will get dct because you divide rho pi r square omega r, etcetera. Then you will get lift per that is dct. This will be sigma a over 2 into r bar square theta minus lambda r bar, but this is not per. So, you have to take the dr bar, okay, because this is the thrust developed elemental thrust developed over a dr bar due to all the blades that is why sigma comes in okay this is from blade element theory got it now you say momentum theory momentum theory we are going to now use differential thrust dt this is i will write momentum theory okay so this is please note this is from blade element theory what we got momentum theory differential i i am going to put differential okay what is my area area is 
2 pi r dr. So, I am going to get differential thrust is if you go back your equation uh, sorry momentum theory we wrote thrust is equal to mass flow rate. Okay. So, we wrote 2 rho a this is for hover. Okay. If it is climb then you will have mass flow rate will add the climb velocity also. Right now, let us take it only for because I have used the climb also here. Okay. If you add climb then this will become 2 rho area of the disk V plus nu because this is the rho A V plus nu is the mass flow rate okay, because the climb velocity plus the induced. This term is the mass flow rate change in velocity is to nu this we will prove it in the next class. Okay. This is how I write my thrust. Now, I am saying this is this expression this is for hover this is for climb okay. hover and climb. You may call it global momentum theory global means I take the entire area area of the entire disk. Now, I say hey, I am not going to take the entire area I take only the annular area. So, I will write here 2 rho v climb plus nu into nu what is my area 2 pi r dr. Okay. You follow what I have done and this is the differential momentum theory. Now, you may ask actually I will tell you now <laughs> why I have to take the annular area why cannot I take only a small r d r d theta. Okay, you can well you can do that actually that is used in uh, industry if you want even the azimuthal variation that is again the assumption that is all, all these are very simple assumptions you make and then try to get an inflow value. Now, you have a expression for this you can non dimensionalize this divided by as usual rho pi r square omega r square. If you non dimensionalize you will get d c t this is from momentum theory you will have d c t will be because you have 2 and 2 you will have 4 I okay. will write that 4 this term is lambda because V c plus nu over omega r is lambda and then this divided by omega r is lambda i. Okay. Then r bar d r bar because non dimensionalized rho pi r square omega capital R whole square. Now, you see I have two expressions for the differential thrust coefficient one from blade element theory one from momentum theory. Okay. Now, I simply relate relate means just equate both. Now, you see this lambda is you know that this lambda is lambda c plus lambda i. Okay. And here you have lambda lambda i equate both of them then collect all the terms. Okay. 
Now let us see when I equate, I erase this part, okay. I erase this completely. Then I will write this after that we will go to that. So, you will have 4 this lambda I am using it as lambda climb plus lambda i lambda i r bar d r bar. This is equal to you have your sigma a over 2 r bar square theta bar sorry r bar square theta minus r bar lambda c plus lambda i d r bar. Okay, cancel out. Okay, then you will be left with this simple equation which is 4 lambda c plus lambda i into lambda i equals sigma a over 2 r bar theta okay, minus lambda c plus lambda i. Okay. Now, this is nothing but a quadratic equation in lambda i. So, you will write this as 4 lambda i square plus lambda i 4 lambda c plus sigma a over 2 minus sigma a over 2 theta r bar minus lambda c equals 0. Okay. This is a quadratic equation in lambda i. Now, you see the interesting part. This is the induced velocity and I have the local blade angle, which angle is there okay? and number of blades is there, lift curve slope is there all these factors are there that means if i solve you write because this is a quadratic equation you can write lambda i equals minus all those things and that is what is given here okay all right so you can note down this expression because this is the this is the now you see minus b this is the term plus r minus root of b square minus 4 a c okay, divided by 2 a and then you divide by that factor 4 etcetera, you will get that expression, but you know that minus b plus or minus 2 roots are there, that minus root then you get a negative value for inflow which you cannot have. So, from physics you say I must have only the positive value for the root all right. And that is why you put only the plus sign. Is it clear? Now, this lambda i, if you look at it, this is a function of r bar. That means, depending on my span location, inflow can vary, all right. So, this is the please understand this is a powerful expression in the sense it is widely used in the calculations even in research even we use this okay this is a very very important expression we don't use the uniform inflow usually uniform inflow is too gross an approximation but it is good it's all right it is easily you can calculate and then show but you always take 
non-uniform inflow through this expression. Now, I just want to reduce this, this is with the climb. If I make lambda c 0, automatically the inflow in hover. So, I will, is it clear? Because that is how the quadratic equation is solved and then you get the root. This equation you get that value. Okay. Now, let us write just for hover case. That means, lambda c is 0. Here, lambda c is 0, lambda c is 0. You will get lambda i okay, is you bring this term first because lambda c is 0, lambda c is 0, everything is 0. That is why you will have sigma a over 8 is a common factor, you can take out that 16 also, that is all right. So, you will write that, that is simplified lambda i becomes minus sigma a over 16, there is the first term and then the second term becomes what sigma a over whole square plus over 8 theta r bar, right. Now, you take out sigma a over 16 outside, that means here you are essentially multiplying by 2. When you take it out, you will get open a bracket, put this term first, this will be 1 plus because sigma a over 2, what is that? When I take out square, I will be left with one more term. So, that term will become that 32 over sigma a theta r bar minus 1. Okay, because that minus 1 is this is that term. Okay. Now, you look at your, what is it clear? Huh? Now, what you do is you see my inflow is a function of angle and r bar. If I want lambda i to be constant everywhere, then if this quantity is a constant, constant means uniform inflow. So, I will say for uniform inflow, if I want, I need that is lambda i is a constant, that means theta r bar should be equal to some constant. So, theta r bar equal to some constant. Okay. This you write it as, because when r bar is equal to 1, that is the tip. So, the constant is nothing but the tip. So, your theta becomes theta tip over r bar. This is the ideal twist. Now, you remember earlier I mentioned why that twist is, if I have this kind of a twist, because r bar is r over capital R. Okay. I will get uniform inflow, you follow. Now, okay, if I get uniform inflow, so what? 